Now we are going to proceed with our tutorial, but before we do that, I wanted to mention just two things quickly. So your gene expression matrix should be with clean, normalized, pre-filtered and corrected for any co-founding factors data. For example, if you think that you have batch effects, it's good that you correct for it before you perform co-expression analysis and building of a network from those. Um, another thing that I wanted to mention, so the type of data that we're going to work with is uh, obtained from uh, breast cancer samples. Um, it is uh, published in this study that I'm mentioning here from 2012. The data is pre-filtered and is normalized, so it is ready to use um, already for the analysis that we are going to do. Uh, and uh, there are a few questions that we would like to answer by analyzing uh, that type of data and building co-expression network. So we would like to know first how many local communities there is in uh, there are in this co-expression network so the second uh, question is to identify the hub genes in all of those important communities that are uh, formed in this co-expression network and finally we would like to know if these hub genes or the genes that have highest degree in these local communities have been previously associated with breast cancer. As I mentioned in the intro video, you will need R and R Studio. Uh, we are going to obtain a graph file that we can then load in Cytoscape and interactively visualize it. So that's why you also need Cytoscape installed. Um, you will not need to download uh, the data from anywhere because it has already exist as a data set in the R package mix omics and we are going to get it directly from there. Okay, let's go to the R tutorial. The uh, libraries that you will need uh, to perform the analysis are mix omics, iGraph and R color brewer. Uh, if you don't have them installed, you can easily do this uh, simply by commenting out uh, this sign from here to here and running all of those commands. You probably know how to install packages already. Um, and uh, of course, it will take uh, a few seconds or a few minutes to install all of those packages if you don't have them. Then you will need to, to load them. Uh, with the library or require function. I already uh, have them installed and loaded. I'm not going to execute these commands. Another good practice is to um, create a directory uh, where you're going to place all the output um, or all output files from our analysis. Um, a suggestion is that you create a directory on your desktop and you call it iGraphs you will need to <clears throat> obtain the full path um, to this directory and this, then place it and replace it here uh, between the uh, double brackets and then you will need to run this command to set your working directory where all output files from this tutorial are going to be stored okay the data we can simply load it by running this command um, this data set actually contains quite a lot of different types of data and in order to query specifically the mRNA breast cancer data, uh, you need to run this. Um, let's check the dimension of the mRNA um, data frame that we obtained. So we have 150 columns and 200, um, sorry, 150 rows and 200 columns. Uh, let's quickly have a look at uh, those 150 rows and um, 
200 columns. So our rows represent the samples, so these are the names of the samples. And our columns are the genes. So in essence, we already have the nodes uh, for constructing our uh, co-expression network. And these are the genes in this uh, data frame or expression matrix. What we need to obtain in order to be able to build the uh, network is the co-expression score between these genes. Or in our case, we are going to estimate the correlation score uh, between the expression levels in each pair of genes. Uh, we are going to use Spearman correlation because um, usually the distribution of the data in RNA is uh, not normal and uh, Spearman is more appropriate than Pearson, which uh, runs, uh, it's a linear test, so it expects uh, the data uh, to be normally distributed and in Spearman the data is ranked in advance prior to the performance of the test for correlation. Okay, so uh, we put our mRNA um, data frame as input and uh, run the correlation function. We're going to obtain correlation matrix as a result of that. Uh, when we look at the correlation matrix, uh, we can see that it's a bit different than the um, mRNA data frame that we put as an input. It's actually a square uh, matrix. So it has the genes in the columns and also the genes in the rows. And the numbers that you see are uh, values ranging from minus one to plus one. Minus one is um, perfect negative correlation and plus one is perfect positive correlation. Zero means that uh, there is no correlation uh, between pairs of the genes. So let's quickly have a look. So for example, FAM638 gene is having relatively high positive correlation with RTN2. Um, the same gene FAM638 has um, weak uh, correlation with the GMDS and so on and so forth. Um, okay, so what we're going to do next, it is great that we estimated the uh, correlation scores between the expression levels of each pair of genes, uh, but we cannot provide this um, correlation matrix as an input for the iGraph package for us to be able to generate a co-expression network, we need to provide adjacency matrix. Uh, one thing that an adjacency matrix requires is lack of negative values. So it doesn't work with negative values. Yet we still want to um, use the information from the strong um, negative correlation in our uh, interaction network. And uh, we can do that uh, simply by generating an adjacency matrix from our correlation matrix where we filter for strong positive or negative um, correlations that pass 0 0.5 threshold in absolute terms. So we wouldn't um, care or rather we would ignore the sign before the correlation. But if it is passing the threshold of 0 0.5, we are going to consider that these two genes are interacting um, or are strongly co-expressed. And if it does not pass this threshold, we are going to consider that these two genes are not uh, co-expressed. So, okay, let's run all of those comments. So we set the threshold here to 0 0.5, uh, create the adjacency matrix, and then we're going to have a look at it. So you can immediately see that compared to the correlation matrix, 
there are many more zeros here because we filtered on the uh, strength of the correlation between uh, the gene pairs. Uh, but the diagonal is still represented by ones. It is because um, when a correlation matrix is created, the genes or the results of self correlations are also um, outputted in the diagonal. However, we do not need that self interactions uh, further in our analysis when we are creating the co-expression network. So we are going to um, put or replace all the values in the diagonal uh, of the adjacency matrix with zero. So let's do that. Okay, now you can see that all the diagonal values are zeros. Um, what we are going to create now, because we did not consider the weight of the edges or just their presence or absence, is going to be unweighted um, interaction network. And it is also undirected because we do not know with our correlation analysis whether um, there is a directional effect in the correlations. So that's why our um, graph that we are going to generate is also going to be undirected and unweighted. So the uh, function from the iGraph package that we're going to use um, to generate the interaction network is graph from adjacency matrix. So we just put the adjacency matrix as um, an, an input and we are ready to generate our co-expression network. So that's it. What we can quickly see by just uh, running so executing the uh, graph uh, that we just uh, generated is uh, the fact that we have 200 nodes. We already know that because our initial data frame that we started to work with had 200 genes. And apparently there are 800 35 edges between these 200 genes that happen to have one in the adjacency matrix. So the next thing that we can do, and it's very simple, is to identify the local communities. There are several commands uh, that we can specify in order to do that. Um, one that is frequent shown in the tutorials is this cluster edge between us. So we just have to pass the graph uh, that we generated uh, just now. It's an argument here. Um, cluster edge between us basically is going to estimate um, the between us measure of each edge and will uh, iteratively remove the edges with the highest between us. Um, and, uh, result of this uh, type of uh, analysis is the generation of uh, local communities or estimation of uh, local communities in the network. So we can run this command and you can see that our local communities are 68. That's quite a lot. Uh, it just showing the total number of the local communities. What we can do next is to obtain the community membership for each of our genes. For example, RTN2 belongs to community one, NDRG2 belongs to community T. CCDC113 belongs to community 3. FAM638 belongs to community 1. So you can see that the first gene and the FAM gene belong to the same community. We can quickly have an estimate of the sizes. Uh, community 1 
9 and 13 are the largest.